Hi, it's Andy Lockwood. Today's question is, can my kid get into Harvard? Here's the answer, no. <laughs> so it's not only uh, Harvard that we're talking about. So any competitive school, you know, Harvard as of at least the, uh, the date that I'm recording this has admissions rates sub 5%, uh, Stanford is the same way, and that, that's really the trend you know, because more and more applications are going in without there being more slots freeing up. You know, there's there's a relatively fixed amount of seats available at colleges, but there's more applications going in. But what does it really take to get into a top school? Well, I'll tell you what it's not about. For, for most kids, it is not a meritocracy. It's not only about great grades and great scores. It's also about the institutional goals of that particular college. So what are those institutional goals? A lot of this should kind of make sense to you intuitively. You may not have heard it the way I'm about to describe it. And if you're offended, you know, I apologize. You can uh, unsubscribe to these videos uh, or my website or however you're watching this anytime you want. You won't offend me because I'm just trying to speak the truth. So here's the deal. Grades and scores are very important at competitive colleges. They are factored roughly 60% of the overall admissions decision. Six zero. That means 40% is about other stuff, which is why every year there are kids with fantastic grades and scores who get deferred or rejected at the expense of kids with lesser academic credentials who might get in. And the, the kids up here are like, eh, it's not fair. You know, and my response is, yeah, you know, who said anything about fair? This is not supposed to be a fair process. The colleges decide who they want. So who do they want? Well, they want special categories. They have institutional agendas. Uh, I was going to say they have an agenda, but they have more than one agenda. So in that uh, special category sort of umbrella term, there are legacies, you know, uh, uh, kids whose parents went there, underrepresented minorities. Uh, as I'm recording this, there's a, you know, news about lawsuits from Asians who are no longer underrepresented, just the same way Jews are no longer up underrepresented. Uh, the international students, athletes, ultra, ultra rich, meaning um, uh, they, they call them development cases, and so on and so forth. Those uh, account for roughly two thirds of the incoming class in any given year, two thirds. So what that means is that if you're not one of those special categories, or as I like to say, you're not a plain old white guy, yeah, I told you, offensive, possibly. Uh, but listen, when I say you, if you're not if you're not a plain old white guy, what I really mean is if you're not an Asian or an Indian, you know, uh, an Indian Indian, not not a Native American Indian, or any of these categories that's overrepresented. If you're if you're an underrepresented category or one of those other special categories, legacy athlete, and so forth, your chances of getting in are much better. If you're not in one of those categories, and the the, the admissions rate that's published is like you know I don't know 15 percent. What's your real real rate? It might be seven percent. Might be less than that. So you have to work extra hard to get in. And step one is understanding that this is not a meritocracy. The next step is understanding well what do colleges look at, and that is the topic of another video that I don't have time to do right now, but I will get to it shortly. If you have any questions, you want the uh, if I opened a loop for you that or an itch that you need to scratch, you need to scratch, or you just want to yell at me, no, don't yell at me. Uh, you can contact me using the contact information that's right here on this video. This is Andy Lockwood. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.